welcome to my series of videos of all my automotive projects. This is my 1987 S10 Blazer. Now this Blazer has something very different about it than every other S10 Blazer out there. It is an electrical power, electrically powered Blazer. It has a DC series wound electric motor that propels it coupled to the original style five-speed transmission and if we move around to the front of the vehicle we can see a bunch of batteries no engine the engine is actually very small and it's underneath these batteries I have 18 batteries in the vehicle total and these are the first six the vehicle's total voltage is 144 volts DC nominal and it has an approximated amp hour capacity each battery of around 120 average some have a little more and some have a little less due to different models of batteries that we were unable to get the same model of battery at the same time this is the only part of the vehicle that's original it's the HVAC system and the brake booster now I installed these two things here this is a vacuum booster pump and this is a vacuum canister now this pump depressurizes this canister and helps to this canister helps to when you push the brake give it an extra boost of brake pressure and then the pump kicks in and works to pull the vacuum on the brake booster so that you slow this over 4,000 pound vehicle down the batteries are heavy important to have a good braking system now, if we move around to the rear of the vehicle, we'll find all the gadgets and the gizmos and everything that makes the thing go around, or forward in this case. There's six more batteries up underneath this luggage carrier. And here's a contactor, and it supplies voltage when the key is turned on to this Curtis 1321C, I believe it is, DC motor controller. It's a 144 volt motor controller and it's what takes the throttle inputs when you push the gas it's a little bit it pulsates really really fast and it makes the motor rotate slow and then you hit the gas it's still pulsating really really fast but it changes the rate it pulsates pulsates at but no matter what where it's pulsating it's pulsating really really fast it uses transistors more specifically MOSFETs inside the controller to do the pulsating. Now this battery here is actually a 19th battery, but it doesn't propel the car, so it's not included in the battery count. This is the battery that you would have in an everyday vehicle. It's just a 12 volt battery, provides power to the lights, etc. And it helps supplement what's called the DC-DC converter. The DC-DC converter takes power out of the main batteries and puts it into this battery so that this battery can run the vacuum pump headlights, tail lights, etc. Back in the corner here we have this copper colored QBT battery charger. It's 144 volts as well and it'll charge the vehicle in about 13.2 hours. Now the most <laughs> the most weird looking thing of all is, is this. This gas cap and that's what's in the gas cap. A standard J1772 adapter plug. The with the North American standard for electric car charging at level two. And you can look up what all the different levels are and whatnot. But this is level two charging. And I have an adapter cord that plugs in to here and it plugs into my house. And all electric car charging stations, if they're level two, will have a cord that just plugs in here, switch, you turn it on. And away it goes, it starts charging. So you can get a few extra boosts of miles. I know most Nissan dealerships around here in Houston have electric car charging ports. So if you can find a Nissan dealership, you can plug it in. That's about the only place around here that's got them. Uh, Whole Foods has got them and some other different businesses have got them. Up north and on the, on the west coast, they've got a lot more. So if you live out there and you have an electric car, you know it's a little bit easier to find a place to plug in. And with only about averaging around 30, 35 miles of range, it's important to have a place to plug in. But then again, 30 to 35 miles of range doesn't seem like a lot compared to what's the Chevrolet Bolt 
200 miles of range, Chev uh, Chevrolet Volt with 40 miles of range with a gas engine, or a Tesla Model S with about 200, well, depending on what package you get, anywhere from 200 to 300, and depending on how you drive that one, and what will be the Tesla Model 3. All th That one has a 200 mile range as well, they say 2 to 3. But no, they don't really know exactly what, but it's hundreds of miles of range more than what this has. Those cars are cheap compared to the high-end electric cars. This is cheap compared to those. Those, they say, are $30,000, $30,000. Well, with the tax credit, they're a whole lot, without the tax credit, they're a whole lot more. This thing, under $10,000. You buy the car and convert the thing. So... That, that saves you money to begin with, but it's it's a good vehicle for city driving. I thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed viewing this vehicle. And if you'd like to do the conversion yourself, just look at that link in that description, and you can find basic schematics on how to do your own. Keep in mind, every vehicle is different, and you have to know a lot about electricity to do this. I wouldn't recommend it if you have trouble putting in like an electric outlet. You probably should stick with, you know, something else. But uh, this is for the electrically, mechanically inclined. Thank you again.